Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us for devotions. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word, for your constant reminders to us uh, about your grace, your good news, and your goodness towards us. We thank you that Jesus is our ultimate mediator. He stands between us and, and God, between you, God, and he is on our side and he speaks on our behalf in support of us. We thank you for that truth. We pray that the word would touch us today. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today's passage is Genesis chapter 47, verses 13 to 22. And I will read that for us. There was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were, they were buying, and he brought it to Pharaoh's palace. When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before our eyes? Our money is all gone. Then bring your livestock, said Joseph. I will sell your food in exchange for your livestock, since your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, their sheep and goats, their cattle and donkeys. And he brought them through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was over, they came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. Why should we perish before your eyes, we and our land as well? by us and our land in exchange for food, and we with our land will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Give us seed so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not become desolate. So Joseph brought, bought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh. The Egyptians, one and, all, one and all, sold their fields because the famine was too severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's, and Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. However, he did not buy the land of the priests because they received a regular allotment from Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment Pharaoh gave them. This is why they did not sell their land. Uh, so we hear in this story the continuation of Joseph uh, and the continuation of this uh, severe famine. And so ultimately you see Joseph uh, really acting on Pharaoh's behalf and, and at, at the end of the day Pharaoh ends up getting pretty much all the money all the livestock of the people of Egypt and Canaan and ultimately all the land as well so really Joseph um, I mean just uh, really uh, I guess Pharaoh was indebted to Joseph I guess you could say uh, because he is the one who kind of orchestrates all this. Again, ultimately, it's God's perfect plan, right? That Joseph is in control. And, and I wanted to share from Living Life um, uh, what they shared as an analogy of kind of comparing Joseph to Jesus. So, Joseph's calling to preserve the people of Egypt during this devastating famine does not end after he collects, stores, and sells the grain from the seven years of abundance. As the famine rages on and the people run out of food and money, Joseph continues to act as a mediator between the people and Pharaoh, applying his wisdom to find solutions that will ensure the survival of the nation. This is, the, this is one of the many ways that Joseph's story mirror, mirrors that of Jesus, whose work did not finish on the cross where he secured our salvation. Jesus continues to intercede on our behalf today. And he is always working to help us in our battles against the spiritual forces that try to destroy our faith. So just as Joseph acts as a mediator between people and Pharaoh, he, he is uh, an analogy of Jesus. And because Jesus is our mediator as well between us and God. And, um, you know, if you kind of continue to read the Old Testament, there's always... It's always pointing to Jesus. It's always pointing to the good news of what Jesus has done. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can take that encouragement and be reminded that Jesus is interceding to God on our behalf. Uh, and he is our perfect mediator. Uh, so let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us Jesus who is a perfect mediator, perfect intercessor for us. 
and we know he he advocates for us he's on our side lord even when things are difficult even when everything is against us help us to remember that jesus is on our side that you are on our side and that we can always fall back on that truth i would pray that you would help us to remember that truth to be thankful and give you glory for that today we pray all these things in jesus name amen thanks everyone have a good day